I'm Kinsey. I'm Immunolab's holistic nutrition consultant. I help my clients get to the root cause of their health concerns by making the necessary lifestyle and dietary changes. Awesome. Well, thanks for being so here I again, Kinsey. Are, absolutely. And I know the last time we talked, um, you just got your results. So we kind of yep. rolled through your results, went over foods you reacted to, talked about some substitutions and where those um, ingredients can be hidden. A lot of times you aren't necessarily drinking cow's milk, but you really don't know that that cow's milk is in salad dressings and crackers and you name it. Dairy is pretty much in everything and unavoidable. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, the, my biggest challenge has just been with wheat, you know, making sure to, you know, avoid it. Cause that one kind of slips into all kinds of different stuff. And, you know, in the previous video, we we're talking more about that. Like, you know, my reactions, what to look out for, what to, you know, watch, watch for in my daily you know, consumption of foods where stuff's hidden and a lot of feedback that I was getting, you know, and I'm also getting from the you know team out here is, what what can someone do proactively or you know i guess reactively to getting the results aside from just avoiding the food like what else could ha you know could they do to ensure a healthy gut and that's what i want to talk with you more about today is you know what can i be doing to help make sure that my gut is not hyperpermeable but that i can you know help fix my leaky gut i can reduce my reactive foods on the next time that i retest just you know things that you found that can really help with that Right, absolutely. And actually, the father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, once said, all disease begins in the gut. Oh, so wow. it really is, you know, it, people, you know, get their blood print or their food sensitivity test results back. They avoid the foods for 90 days and then they think it's a free for all and they can go back to having that sugar because they avoided it for three months. But that's really my goal when working with clients is to say, let's get off this sugar. You know, the sugar isn't doing your body any good. And you just took you know, so much time to avoid it. Let's make that lifestyle change. And that's really what it all comes down to. And going back to what I said about all disease begins in the gut, a lot of times people don't necessarily have digestive issues, but they've got other issues. They've got autoimmune diseases. They've got skin, um, you know, rashes and eczema. Um, I mean, trying to think of, whoops, did I lose you or are you still on? No, I'm still on. Okay. Um, and yeah, digestive issues, of course, like chronic constipation and diarrhea, um, nutritional deficiencies, and of course, multiple food sensitivities. And that really, those are all signs that the gut needs healing. So yeah. you look to the gut to heal it. And, you know, there are things that we have done over time that have made our guts more leaky. And there are things that we can do taking the necessary measures to seal the gut. And um, that it really is the foundation of good health is having a healthy gut. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the things that you found that can help ensure a healthy gut? I know for myself personally, like in my previous results, I had, you know, probably more around like 20 or 17 foods I was reactive to. And then this time is, you know, not a whole bunch less, but, you know, decent amount less. And the severity of reaction was, you know, lower as well. And I, I personally, I, I attribute that to me being a lot more regimented on making sure I take a probiotic. I don't know all the research behind it, aside from if you're able to break down your foods and digest them better, then in theory, you should you have a better gut health in general. So have you found the same to be true? Is there any protocol or things that you would you know, normally recommend to individuals that have you know, this hyperpermeability of their gut? Right, absolutely. I will touch base or touch on that, but I do want to first explain what exactly leaky gut is because I know sometimes absolutely, I'll talk yeah. to somebody about it and they're like, wait, so what is leaky gut? Um, it really is an overlooked topic and not something that, you know, your doctor, at least my doctor, has never said anything about a leaky gut. Yeah. Um, but leaky gut is basically a condition in which your intestinal lining becomes porous. And what happens is that allows larger food particles and pathogens to enter our bloodstream where those things don't belong. And as a result, our body produces antibodies as a way to protect ourselves. Um, and when that happens, we can continue eating foods um, that are leaching into the bloodstream. And because the body is protecting itself, our body creates an immune response and goes in on attack. So eventually that can lead to many conditions, autoimmune diseases, especially thyroid issues. You know, I said it in the beginning, digestive issues, um, skin conditions, you name it. So that is what leaky gut is. Your gut is actually leaky. It's leaking foods and pathogens that don't belong in the bloodstream. Oh, wow. uh, 
going back to ways, you know, what you can do to heal your gut, food is medicine. So making the necessary dietary changes um, is very important. Eating an anti-inflammatory diet, which, um, you know, is also very important. Avoiding things like gluten and sugar, which contribute to um, leaky gut is another factor. Um, bone broth and gelatin, those are two very great gut healing foods that you can incorporate daily into your diet. Um, bone broth just tastes delicious as is, but you can also use bone broth to say cook your grains in or, um, you know, have okay, so like add some more flavor to the rice or whatever that you're making. Yes, exactly. Um, gelatin. Um, there's so many things that you can do with gelatin from making, you know, gummies like healthy gummies, um, to making gelatin eggs and using those as an egg substitute. Oh, wow. Right. Um, fermented vegetables, which contains a plethora of different probiotics is great, as well as taking a high quality probiotic as you've done yourself. The gut is actually one cell thick. So just having an imbalance in your gut microbiome can be more than enough to cause a leaky gut. Um, wow. Well, you said one cell, so it's just like... Right, hmm. right. Yes. Wow. Um, so... Other things, you know, making sure you're eating healthy fats and avoiding the detrimental fats or the pro-inflammatory pro causing fats, which are the omega-6 fatty acids from, you know, canola oil and vegetable seed mm. or um, vegetable oils and hydrogenated oils. Um, taking, you know, making sure you're getting enough vitamin D and zinc. Most of us, despite living in sunny Florida, are deficient in vitamin D. Um, and digestive enzymes can be very helpful. Digestive enzymes actually break down our food, so our digestive systems aren't working you know, on overdrive trying to break down large food particles. So those are all great things that you can do to ensure that you, know, you either overcome leaky gut or try to maintain your good gut health as it is. Um, of course, the first, you know, when you do have a leaky gut, um, the first step is to remove your food sensitivities. So that's a great first step you can take. Reason yeah, being, you gotta, you gotta stop the thing that's instigating a lot of the issue. Right, exactly. And that's what you've done yourself, right? Over time with all your testing, you know, you've, you test, you remove your food sensitivities, you test again, and you have fewer food sensitivities. And that's what we hope to see is that over time, the more tests you have, the fewer sensitivities you have. And that is a sign that you are healing your gut. Um, the next, there's actually, it's the 4R protocol. So the first step is to remove. You're removing your food sensitivities, you're removing your triggers. The second step is to replace those foods with healing foods. So as I said before, um, bone broth, gelatin, fermented vegetables, healthy fats, fruit, um, that can be very helpful. Um, after you replace those foods, you can work on repairing the gut with specific nutrients like enzymes, the digestive enzymes that I spoke about before. And last but not least, but I wouldn't say last because it can happen right now, is um, you can rebalance your gut flora through taking probiotics. Gotcha. So it really is making sure to have that whole ecosystem. You have to stop putting in the stuff that's, you know, causing that leaky gut. You then need to, you know, replace those foods, as you're saying, like not having, say, the bad fats that are going to be causing a trigger and causing an issue, but instead of replacing that with a healthier fat and then, you know, repair. And that's now with the repair, what, what would that look like? Like how, how would one go about repairing? So key nutrients can be helpful. Okay. Because I talk about supplements, but supplements really are to be supplemented in addition to a good diet. If your diet, if you're still consuming the gluten, this and that, that is, you know, wrecking your gut, supplements are going to be of no use. So gotcha. um, once so your can... diet is cleaned up, then you can add the supplements. And that just kind of acts as a boost. So. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Make sure you're getting enough of what you need to be getting in your diet anyways. Right. Yes. Excellent. So I can't have donuts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then take a multivitamin or like a green powder. 
unless you want leaky gut. <laughs> okay. and probably a and whole that, myriad you know, of that other That brings healthy. me to my next thing is that that's really how a gut becomes hyperpermeable. It's from eating those foods, eating the gluten, eating the unsprouted grains, um, the pasteurized antibiotic laden dairy products, sugar, GMOs, um, chronic stress. That's another thing. Some, you know, some people, and I'll be, I'll be honest, myself included, I've got a very clean diet. And I personally, I think I mentioned this on the last video, I had 46 food sensitivities. Um, and at the time I was going in a big transition, I was moving, um, I was, you know, moving across the country, no less. So I, I was experiencing a little bit of stress and it showed, you know, I woke up bloated every morning, despite not even having food in my stomach. So it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, and inflammation in the gut in itself, um, a big contributor to this is having low stomach acid. Most of us, you know, think that too much stomach acid is a bad thing and it really isn't. Um, that's a webinar for another day, which I'll get into, but you know, we want to fill up on people are taking all these antacid drugs and whatnot, and you're really doing more harm than good. That's, that's not good because that's not getting to the root cause. It's taking care of the symptoms, which is only going to result in more problems later down the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge misconception. A lot of times when people think they need an ant, an ant acid or an acid reduction, in reality, they usually need more acid because exactly. they need it in their stomach to be able to break down the foods that's in there. And when you're taking ant acid, you're essentially diluting and preventing your stomach from doing what it actually needs to do. Exactly. So that's yes. The whole issue. Yeah. And that's not just with ant acids. That's really with all over the counter medications, um, aspirin. I, I know some people, you know, NSAIDs, they take those just because it's preventing inflammation in your body. That is the craziest thing I ever heard. You know, you, I mean, they wake up and pop a aspirin like it's a multivitamin and that's not good. You're really, I mean, that in itself is like taking a, a knife to your gut lining. Yeah. So, and that's, I know that's why a lot of the times we talk to people about, you know, if you have chronic symptoms, that's something to look for as far as, far as finding out what foods are triggering or potentially causing an issue. Because if it's chronic, if it's recurring, if you need that aspirin every morning or you feel like you need to reach for that and ask all the time, something's going on routinely that's causing this imbalance, that's causing this issue, and you want to figure out what that is. Because I completely agree with you. It would be ludicrous to have, you know, a nail through your hand and then go to the doctor and they prescribe you some kind of a painkiller and then you just take painkiller for the rest of your life, but you never remove the thing out of your hand, right? And I mean, you that's, can simply just remove that. Exactly. Yeah, remove Save it, it heal it, right? And, well, it's actually everything that you just listed, remove, replace, you know, put some healing stuff there, repair yeah. it, rebalance. Yeah. That really is what it's all about. So that's, that's completely right. Yeah. Yeah. I know one of our clients talks a lot about you know, just getting you back to homeostasis, not even worrying about this concept of vibrant health or, you know, uh, longevity is just allow the body to get to homeostasis. Cause when you reach homeostasis, your body's operating as it should. If you get out of balance one way or the other, that's when, you know, issues arise, but just allow the body to get back to homeostasis. Right. And another thing is that our body is always trying to maintain homeostasis. So of course, different environmental factors and you know dietary choices throw us out of balance. But we have, as a society in 2018, especially, we've like not trusted our bodies and act like our bodies really aren't living as they are. So yeah. just like a plant, you know, they're they're here to live. They don't want to die. So yeah, I, I think that's where right nutrients and they thrive. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of research is going around the gut, and they're discovering that there's just this entire universe inside of our gut of just living things. I, I remember there's one article, this was probably a couple of years ago that I was talking about the amount of information that's in our poop. And it was like tetraflops of information, which is just an insane amount of information, but it's all related to our health and it's originating in the gut and what's going Absolutely. on in the gut. Right. Right. Totally. Yeah, so, I mean, the last thing you want to do is be you know, eating something that's going to be essentially dropping napalm on your internal ecosystem that needs to have things that are living and, you know, balancing and doing, you know, their part of it. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting to hear those four steps. And I, something I was curious about, cause I remember hearing about this somewhere was um, aloe, that aloe can also help a lot if you have leaky gut. Do you have any you know, comments on that? I mean, do you, oh, aloe or, Okay. I actually have an aloe plant, but since I've been on vacation, it's looking a little sad or else I would show you it. <laughs> uh, maybe next time I'll bring it out. 
Awesome. Um, but aloe is very healing to the gut lining, just like gelatin is. You can actually take the leaf and you can buy it in the refrigerator section at Whole Foods. Don't get me wrong. It looks a little scary. You might get some looks, but that's okay. Um, and you can actually fillet the aloe leaf and you can actually use that inner gel in your smoothies. So most people are used to, you know, aloe on sunburns and whatnot, but have it taking it internally is amazing. Excellent. There's also aloe juice. Can't say it tastes the best, um, but mixing it with a good tasting smoothie and you don't even know you're consuming it. So yes, yeah. aloe is awesome. Have you ever tried it? Yeah, I actually took some uh, like shots of uh, aloe like at night and in the morning and stuff. Um, I haven't really done that recently, but I had in the past. And yeah, I'm trying to think what the taste is like. It's kind of like a bitterness. It's it like is. A, kind of a bitter, sour taste, but it's yeah. really, it's it's not that big of a deal. Like I've definitely <laughs> ate and tasted things that are much worse than that. And it's, right. it's not really like long lasting. Like you just take the shot of aloe, you know, drink a little water and it's like gone. It's right, not, exactly. It's not a lingering like say if you eat raw garlic, like that's kind of with you like all day. Yeah. Uh, same with like say raw onions, but yeah, aloe, not so much. So yeah, right, I mean, that's, right. I don't know if I've had, I don't know if I've directly ate like aloe leaf, like just taking a leaf and like bit into it. <laughs> but I've definitely had aloe. Yeah, the green, the like the green leaf part isn't edible. It's the inside oh, gel. That just that clear well. inside. Yes. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Excellent. So do you, do you have any other tips of, you know, things that people can do aside from just removing the food to help with their gut? Um, you know, man, as I said before, managing sp stress, eating an anti-inflammatory diet and avoiding those foods that directly contribute to leaky gut is the key to good health, overall health. And not just for a month, two or three months, but forever. So, you know, if you're, Oh, one thing I did want to say, you know, with gluten, you had mentioned to me that um, your religious taking of the probiotics is really why you have fewer food sensitivities as well as um, not no longer being reactive to gluten, wheat, and I mean, I don't know if you mentioned cane sugar. Maybe I'm making that one up. Uh, I don't think I'm reactive to cane eggs. sugar anymore. It was eggs. Eggs. Eggs yeah. for sure I'm not, yeah. Um, and the thing with gluten that, you know, the reason... When, when clients get their test results and they say, oh, I can have gluten, I usually say, whoa, 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 let's just discuss gluten a little bit because gluten literally makes everybody's gut more permeable. So even though you might have reacted negatively on your anti-gliadin test, doesn't necessarily mean you should be continuing to consume gluten. And the reason being is because it creates micro tears in your gut lining. Some people can actually recover from those micro tears quicker um, and by quicker, I mean from breakfast to lunch and there's no inflammation present. And that's how those people get away with consuming gluten. While other people, those micro tears take a little bit longer to heal. So it's really important to know that every time you are consuming gluten, regardless of being reactive to the actual protein, you're creating those micro tears in your gut lining. And that really isn't doing much good for your body. Gotcha. So regard, so, so actually that, that's a really good insight. So are there any other foods that you would say like, all right, you know, regardless of if you come up reactive to this specific food or not, kind of make sure to stay away from it. You mentioned one as being gluten, like uh, you were saying before, like uh, bad fats, is there any particular fats to avoid? It's more so the vegetable oil based types of fats, canola oil, without a doubt, canola oil is actually pro-inflammatory and it's a rancid oil. So um, you do want to avoid canola oil at all costs. Gotcha. And I will say canola oil is in everything. And the reason being is because it's cheap pr to produce and it's shelf stable. High quality fats, specifically oils, um, are delicate. So they turn rancid when they're exposed to oxygen, light. Um, so that's why a lot of high quality vegetable oil, or not vegetable oils, high quality oils say like, Olive oil are found in glass dark containers for that, for the reason that they do become rancid very easily. Gotcha. Uh, so stay away from gluten, stay away from vegetable oil oils, oil. especially right. canola oil. Yeah. And that, I know that if you look at anything processed like, um, you know, Dorito chips or, you know, things like that, it usually has canola oil in them. And a lot of right. like, even um, like pastas, like pre-made foods usually have canola oil. Exactly. Them. Right. Yeah, you got to definitely watch out for that. Anything else that you would add to that? Like, um, you know, what about sugar? Is sugar a concern as well? It definitely is. I don't even consider sugar a food. That's why I thought, eh, I won't even say it. Sugar is a gotcha. drug. So avoid sugar regardless. 
Gotcha. Um, yeah. Anything else that you'd say, you know, as a top food or top thing to make sure to stay away from? I'm not going to necessarily say with this one, it's, you know, an all or nothing, but dairy can be problematic for a lot of people. So um, if you think you have a problem with dairy, I highly recommend avoiding it for a couple months or three months and see how you do. Um, and the reason being is because dairy is meant to grow a baby calf into a 500 pound mammal within a year. It's really not for adults to be drinking the milk of another species. So we lose the enzyme lactase to digest the milk sugar lactose after the age of three. So the majority of people are, you know, drinking cow's milk and walking around with these symptoms that they consider normal and a part of their everyday life when it's anything but normal. Yeah. So of course, you know, looking into the higher, you know, the better quality sources of dairy, such as um, organic, without a doubt, if you're consuming dairy, it must be organic and preferably grass fed. Um, yeah. Because again, back to those healthy fats, you are what um, that animal eats. So the yeah. animal actually generates different um, omega fats from the foods it's given. Yeah, I know that's a big challenge with uh, dairy is that, yeah, a lot of us can't even digest it. And aside from that, a lot of things that go on to dairy cows, you know, like the antibiotics and all the other stuff, and even just the living conditions that can potentially make that food way less ideal than, uh, than many, many other options out there, especially nowadays. I think that's a, a big thing to keep in mind is that nowadays it's a lot easier to find those alternatives. It might not be as easy to find them in say like a pizza hut, but right. it's going to be a lot easier when you're in the grocery store looking, you know, for cheese replacements or milk replacements. There's a lot of nut milks that are really good nowadays too. So. Oh, heck yes. Yep. Awesome. So then now we know, you know, the four R's remove, replace, repair, rebalance. Um, we know four, you know, foods to stay away from gluten, vegetable oils, especially canola, sugar, and dairy. Anything that if someone, you know, wasn't eating that they should start looking to eat more of or incorporate in their diet or supplement any kind of tips of stuff that people can take action to start incorporating in their lifestyle? I think all of us can benefit from adding more veggies in. And okay. my whole philosophy is add in the good foods and your body will naturally crowd out the bad ones. And it's not always, you know, what you are eating, but it is, as you said, what you aren't eating. So most of us, you know, are eating those fermented vegetables and healthy fat. So um, making sure, you know, going through your kitchen, doing your own little kitchen cupboard detox is important because if we have the food in our houses, we're going to eat those foods. If we clean that out and replace everything. Um, we can make healthier lifestyle choices and making sure we're getting those key foods and nutrients to heal our gut. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, I know for myself, I lean much more towards, you know, vegan, vegetarian, and the more, vegetables I eat, the better I feel, the more full I feel too. And just, uh, just in, I mean, it's hard to quantify every area of it, but I just, I just feel better. And anytime I eat more dairy or kind of gluten containing foods, I just don't feel as well. And usually I end up getting hungrier faster and like right. more ravenously. So, right. So that yeah. becomes a big challenge. I've definitely found that as I've added, you know, better oils, which is funny when you're mentioning about the oil, I got some right there in the darker bottle. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, as I add that to my salad, I find I'm able to feel sustained way longer when I eat a salad than beforehand when I'd eat maybe like some kind of like an iceberg lettuce with maybe some BS little, you know, vegetables sprinkled on top and, you know, right. not much dressing. But with the having a lot of the olive oil on it, it'll, I'll actually feel sustained a lot longer and I just, I just feel good. So I right. completely agree that adding a lot more vegetables can help. And I think even in certain ways, like if someone wants to replace you know, dairy or gluten, and then they're making some kind of a pizza. Well, if you add on you know, more vegetables on that pizza, you'll feel full. And you can also you know, play with a lot of interesting flavors as well. So Absolutely. And everybody thinks, um, you know, pizza has to be cheese, double cheese, <laughs> pepperoni, and it really doesn't, you know, think outside the box, you know, you can have spread, you know, hummus on your pizza, or even use a marinara sauce and then top it or barbecue sauce is really good. You can do barbecue sauce with pineapple and black beans and create kind of like a Hawaiian pizza. Another option is to do hummus and hummus comes in so many different flavors today. So, um, you know, that with roasted vegetables, and then you can even do a high quality, quality meats like um, pasture raised and organic chicken. So yeah, there's a lot of different nice. options. So 
Anything else people should add or incorporate or you're just going to stick with just vegetables in general? I'm thinking vegetables in general, healthy fats, quality protein, sprouted nuts and seeds. Um, and if you are consuming grains, preferably sprouted is better than unsprouted too. Gotcha. Okay. And then with the, um, with the quality protein, can you like better help us understand that? Like what would a quality protein be for you? Yes. Yeah, so quality protein basically means, um, happy animals. So organic and then what those animals are meant to eat. So cows are meant to eat grass and, you know, chickens are meant to eat stones and bugs and whatnot. So having those animals eat their natural diet produces healthy meat. So when we eat that, as I said, we are what the animal eats. Um, we can obtain those healthy nutrients. When, you know, animals like cows are fed their unnatural diet, like grains, they get sick. And as a result, they need to be pumped with antibiotics. And what happens is we consume that and we get that in our system. So, um, that's not what we want to, that's not what we want to do. And I know, and I, you know, I really do get that quality meats are much more expensive than conventional meats. Um, but there's really some good websites out there that you can check out. Um, or even just I'm trying to think of what the, what is the, you know, even if you just Google local farms in my area, um, a lot of these farms, you can buy bulk meats for cheaper rates than, you know, Whole Foods has, because I know Whole Foods, they put a big price tag on quality meats. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Kinsey, for, you know, coming on this presentation, um, you know, continuing to support me and, you know, help give advice to, you know, not only myself, but everyone that's watching these videos so that they understand what is it that I do aside from just avoiding the foods, you know, what else can I do to proactively heal my gut? So, you know, thank you so much for walking through all these, for, you know, sharing your four R's of the remove, replace, repair, rebalance. I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, you're reminding us to stay away from gluten, canola oil, sugar, dairy, and to add more vegetables into our diet. Have uh, healthy fats, as you were mentioning, especially the you know olive oils, as you can see back here in the darker bottle so it doesn't go rancid. And you're looking for those quality proteins, whether it's you know, going to Whole Foods or you know, preferably finding a local farmer's market and a place that you can source it for you know, even less more than likely than the cost at Whole Foods, but still having high quality um, protein. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Kinsey. I'm sure everyone here appreciates it. And you know, for the people watching, if you have any questions or if there's more stuff they want to dive into, you know, please just jump into the comments below, put your question, and I'll make sure that you know, Kinsey and I have a chance to discuss it and then we can figure out how we can answer this and you know, continue to add more value out to you all that are watching this. Because although you know, it began as you know, my kind of blood print journey, um, it's starting to evolve more to finding a way to really help Help serve even more people. So, you know, thank you so much. Thank you, Kinsey. And we'll be having another video coming up uh, very shortly.